All right, man, peace. So as many of you brothers know who've been on my channel for long enough, I have a couple of nicknames for Mr. LeBron James. One of them being LeBron Armstrong. <laughs> and now I've added an addition to that nickname of LeBron the Snake James Armstrong. Why is that? Because like Lance Armstrong, who also was associated with Nike, LeBron James loves to control the narrative. He loves to appear as if he's a quote unquote super good guy. And I'm not necessarily going to call him a bad guy per se. I think that in his heart of hearts, he means well. But he's also very manipulative. He's very narcissistic. And that leads him to trying to get over on people and getting upset when they get over on him first. Such a thing happened to him back in the summer of 2017 when he tried to get Kyrie Irving traded to the Phoenix Suns. If you brothers remember, he was trying to get a trade pulled off where the Cleveland Cavaliers would acquire Eric Bledsoe and Paul George in exchange for Kyrie Irving going out to the Phoenix Suns. And we've come to find out that LeBron James and Kyrie had major chemistry issues in their locker room. And LeBron was trying to have him sent to Siberia. Well, that trade fell through. Kyrie Irving found out about it and he demanded that he get moved. He, he did not particularly care where he had a list, but he wanted out. And he wanted to make sure that he was going to be sent to a team where he felt like he was going to be comfortable. But in my view, I don't think that he that he particularly cared where he was going to go as long as it was not a Siberia type situation like he was going to be sent to with the Phoenix Suns. In the aftermath of that, it was very clear that the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers, Dan Gilbert, stepped in and greenlit the trade, even though LeBron James no longer wanted Kyrie to get traded once the Paul George and Eric Bledsoe trade fell through. I believe that Dan Gilbert greenlit the trade because he wanted to hamstring LeBron in his last season with the Cleveland Cavaliers and let him know you're not going to control our franchise. You're not going to stipulate what I'm going to do. I don't care how big your head is. I don't care how much you're associated with Nike. I run shit here. And I think that he wanted LeBron to fail a little bit in his last year with Cleveland because for all intents and purposes, Dan Gilbert already got what he needed. He only wanted one chip. Dan Gilbert knew that all LeBron James had to bring in was one championship. They were not going to beat Golden State anyway, even if they kept Kyrie. But LeBron was trying to get Kyrie to stay because he knew that if Kyrie left, he'd be there all by himself and he would have to struggle and he would look bad. He only wanted Kyrie gone on his terms. Well, now we fast forward to almost the winter of 2018 and LeBron James is still trying to control the narrative. Now he's claiming that the reason why he left Cleveland is because Kyrie left Cleveland. And we know that could not be the case because he and his team and Nike Incorporated orchestrated that school, the quote unquote, I promise school to, to be opened in the summer that he was going to leave Cleveland. So we know that he had plotted this out for a very long time coming to LA. So he's still lying, he's still conniving, and he's still trying to utilize Machiavellian tactics to get his way. So anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Returning to the land tonight, reunited, and it feels so good. Maybe, maybe not. LeBron told The Athletic that everybody knows when Kyrie got traded, it was the beginning of the end of everything. It's not a secret. Stephen A. Uh, no, not quite LeBron James. We know that the beginning of the end in regards to you believing that you had a chance to win a championship in Cleveland was when the Golden State Warriors signed Kevin Durant. That was the true beginning of the end for you in Cleveland. Next. Kyrie, the reason why LeBron left Cleveland. Completely false. LeBron is the reason Kyrie left Cleveland. Thank you, sir. And once again, this seems to be a renaissance with Mr. Stephen A. Smith in regards to his understandings and his courage in speaking the truth pertaining to Mr. LeBron James. Good for him. It ain't the other way around. Uh, we all know that Kyrie Irving came on this show, talked about what he wanted, but you also have to remember that Kyrie Irving would have been a free agent in his last year. And what he knew was is that LeBron James had every intention of leaving and that it would have left Kyrie with this bunch. So now, was I not saying that all the way back in the summer of 2017, I stated that the reason why Kyrie Irving demanded the trade is because he knew that LeBron James was going to try to stick him with that Cleveland Cavaliers franchise. And more likely than not, he had conferred with Kobe Bryant, who told him, look, LeBron James is going to come to the L.A. Lakers in 2018. They already have an under the table deal 
with Magic and Genie. And you know how big a mouth Magic Johnson has. You already know he took Kobe to the size of AL Kobe. Guess who's coming to the squad in 2018? LeBron James is coming, baby. I can't wait. I guarantee you, Magic Johnson told Kobe, Kobe told Kyrie. And Kyrie said, oh, yeah? Okay, no problem. So why wait for that in a contract year, finding yourself in this desolate kind of situation, you know, to the point where J.R. Smith is on the trading trading block, and that's actually news, okay? Why find yourself in that situation when instead what you could do is find a landing spot like Boston where you are a title contender, still in position to get a huge contract because you're in a contract year. Kyrie Irving sort of forest from the trees. He wanted to get the hell up out of there because he had fully anticipated that LeBron James was going to leave after last season. Yes, I've been saying that back from 2017, Stephen A. Smith, and I don't even have the sources that you have. And not only did Kyrie want to leave because he anticipated being left by himself with that moribund franchise, he also wanted to leave because of the level of enmity and antipathy that had developed between himself and LeBron James in their locker room over the course of the previous two or three seasons or so. They were fed up with one another. In Cleveland. So it's not about LeBron, you know, leaving because Kyrie was gone. Kyrie left because he knew LeBron was gone. Those are the facts. And I'm telling you what I know. We all hear in the media stories about the personal relationship and what happened, etc. And I can just tell you that based on that stuff, my strong feeling is that LeBron is an introspective enough person Mm -hmm. that one day, years from now, on a 30 for 30, he will sit there, much as Shaq sat there and talked about Penny Hardaway, like, look, I was young, my ego got in the way, we should have done more, that's on me. I believe, and they never did win a championship, but they got to a title game, uh, Penny and Shaq. Got it, got it. I believe one day LeBron will sit there in front of the camera and say, and he wasn't even young in his career, I did not handle that as well as I should have. Now, brothers, did you hear what Max Kellerman pretty much stated? He pretty much stated or asserted that due to some information that he's been made privy to, that he understands why Kyrie Irving felt like he had to leave Cleveland. In other words, Max Kellerman's pretty much letting the cat out of the bag that LeBron James must have screwed Kyrie Irving over in a big way. Most likely, in my view, just in my view, involving a woman of some sort. Let me rewind this back a little bit. And that LeBron is an int- Because he had fully anticipated that LeBron James was going to leave after last season in Cleveland. So it's not about LeBron, you know, leaving because Kyrie was gone. Kyrie left because he knew LeBron was gone. Those are the facts, and I'm telling you what I know. We all hear in the media stories about the personal relationship and what happened, etc. And I can just tell you that based on that stuff, my strong feeling is that LeBron is an introspective enough person Mm -hmm. that one day, years from now, on a 30 for 30, he will sit there, much as Shaq sat there and talked about Penny Hardaway, like, look, I was young, my ego got in the way, we should have done more, that's on me. Now, how much could LeBron James' ego, quote-unquote, have gotten in the way where it would have necessitated in Kyrie Irving's mind that he had to leave if it was just about basketball stuff, on the court stuff. Just the way in which Max Kellerman prefaced his statement lets you know that there was some type of of personal interaction or altercation that they had. I believe, and they never did win a championship, but they got to a title game, uh, Penny and Shaq. Got it, got it. I believe one day LeBron will sit there in front of the camera and say, and he wasn't even young in his career, I did not handle that as well as I should have, and that one was on me. I believe LeBron is an introspective enough person that if even most of what we hear is true about what went down in Cleveland between him and Kyrie, he will take that on him one day and say, I was the older player, the more mature person. I should have treated Kyrie better. I shouldn't have run him out of town, which is essentially what happened. Max Kellerman, one of LeBron James's number one fanboys in the media, is asserting He's attesting to the fact that LeBron James ran Kyrie Irving out of town. Now, how could LeBron James have ran Kyrie Irving out of town unless he made it his business to constantly try to denigrate and diminish Kyrie Irving's importance to the team in a myriad of ways, not just through verbal abuse, but also through other means? 
there are certain ways that somebody will try to break somebody down if they know that they have the power to do so. You'll oftentimes see many of these tactics utilized in, in churches or temples or groups where men feel like they can bring their woman around. The leader will feel like because he has the authority to lead that man, he'll also have the authority to take that man's woman. Not saying that I know that that's for a fact what happened. I'm just saying that that's just me putting certain pieces together. Yeah, he could have, but it wasn't like he treated Kyrie bad. Here's the thing that people, and I don't think even LeBron and his people realize this at times. Nobody is saying that you did something wrong to somebody else, and certainly not that you did it intentionally. But the aura that is LeBron and all that comes with it, you can find yourself as a teammate of LeBron being inundated with stuff to such a degree that it feels like you're working for LeBron instead of working with him. Right. Stephen A. Smith, when you play basketball on LeBron James's team, you are working for him. <laughs> okay? You are working for him because you're going to get all the blame. He's not going to get the blame from anybody in the media other than Skip Bayless. That's the only person who's going to blame LeBron James for his team's shortcomings at this point in his career. When LeBron went back to Cleveland and was able to win that one championship, he was able to create a lifetime's worth of equity with the media for whatever reason. So any one of LeBron James' teammates already know they're going to get all the blame for their team's shortcomings and very little of the credit. If you're a teammate of his, and like, 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 even though that wasn't the case for Shaq and Kobe because they just had natural vitriol for one another. Kobe was dedicated, committed, whatever. Shaq was committed to when he stepped on the court, but it was committed to Big Mac when he was off of it. The bottom line is that rubbed Kobe the wrong way and Kobe reacted accordingly. But in the case of LeBron with Kyrie, and LeBron with other players. LeBron became the iconic superstar of sports in globally. And that, but then and it was on LeBron to treat Kyrie with a certain degree of respect right. and not contempt. And even in small ways, though, you know, people can pick that stuff up. I want to say it's very obvious that Max Kellerman knows something. He's been made privy to certain information that Stephen A. Smith, I'm sure, knows about as well. But he's not willing to acknowledge on national TV. Why did LeBron leave Cleveland? Cleveland if it's not about Kyrie. And here's the thing people in Cleveland gotta get through their heads. It's not a knock against Cleveland. I mean, people take it there, it's, Cleveland's the butt of Now why would you ask that type of question? Why would LeBron James leave Cleveland if not for Kyrie? Well, I know why he left Cleveland. This, this was already in the cards probably before he went back to Cleveland that he was going to end his career in LA. Butt of a lot of jokes, I get it. LeBron is not Moses. He can't part the sea. Nor can he bring the Pacific Ocean thousands of miles from where it is. Los Angeles is the hub, is the portal through which we export our biggest export, which is our culture. We export, this country exports its number one product, which is our popular culture, through Los Angeles around the world. So consequently, LA, a, 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 an area of 10 million on the Pacific Ocean is one of the glamorous, one of the biggest kind of epicenters of human activity in the Western world, whether people like it or not, and Cleveland isn't. And if LeBron James wants to be a mogul, if he wants to be a billionaire one day, if he wants to do what Michael Jordan did, but maybe while he's still active as a player, he really, it's, it's not that it's impossible to do it in Cleveland, but it's much, much, much more difficult. He returned to Cleveland to finish unfinished business, which never would have happened had he just stayed in Cleveland because Dan Gilbert's not a good enough owner to make that happen, even predating Dan Gilbert. Cleveland was not going to make that happen. He left. He came back once they had a lot of talent because yeah. of the draft picks. He won them a title along. Right, but Max Kellerman, how much talent did they really have because of the draft picks due to him leaving? They had Kyrie. They had Tristan Thompson, who pretty much is just a role player. So all they really had was Kyrie. LeBron stayed away long enough to allow Kyrie Irving to develop. He went and played with his homeboy, with his pansexual homeboy, allegedly pansexual homeboy, D-Wade, down there in Miami. He gave Kyrie some time to cook in the oven. He came back, and he forced a trade for Kevin Love. And they were able to make it work in concert with Draymond Green having an implosion, Steph Curry being chronically injured, Andre Iguodala suddenly having full body spasms, 
as well as Andrew Bogut's knee getting collapsed by J.R. Smith and Harrison Barnes having the worst series of his life. All these things had to come together in order for him to get that one championship in Cleveland. Along with Kyrie, job completed. He's now left to go on to the next part of his career. So it wasn't about basketball. Kyrie could have been Michael Jordan and they could have reigned forever and eventually LeBron was going to leave. It was time for him to go to accomplish the next thing he had in mind and that's why he left. Not because they traded listen, Kyrie. Listen, the bottom line is I cap it the same way I started off the conversation. LeBron, Kyrie is not the reason LeBron left. LeBron is the reason Kyrie left. Yeah. Right. And who Kyrie know that, by the Ky way? Kyrie right? left. Ky I agree with you, Max Kellerman. Who the hell does not know that? Kyrie left ahead of time because he saw this. No, he did not leave ahead of time. He left at the perfect time. This situation that we're looking in Cle at in Cleveland, that's if where he LeBron made a great decision. Look where he is in Boston. Is he could have been hanging out in Cleveland. Is LeBron and that only feeds into the notion that I put forth that Dan Gilbert wanted to hamstring LeBron. Why in the world would you trade your second best player, Kyrie Irving, to your conference rival? unless you're trying to set up the parameters for LeBron James to hopefully lose to Kyrie at some point and send him out of Cleveland with his tail between his legs. Dan Gilbert, he, he knew what he was doing, and he out LeBron. As I stated in another video, LeBron James is used to being the only guy playing chess while everybody else is playing checkers. Well, Dan Gilbert out him. Kyrie Irving also out him, and that's why he's still frustrated about this whole thing. If you guys remember... After the Cleveland Cavaliers were able to uh, finally conquer their opponents, the Boston Celtics, in the Eastern Conference Finals last year, when he walked by Dan Gilbert, when LeBron walked by Dan Gilbert, he acted like he did not even want to give him a high five. Because LeBron James knows. He's sneaky enough, and he's Machiavellian enough, and he's serpentine-like enough to know when somebody is trying to get over on him because he does it all the time. That's why he did not want to acknowledge Dan Gilbert. LeBron trying to, and by the way, J.R. Smith says they're tanking. And by the way, we'll see if he stays in Boston. Well, J.R. Smith been tanking for the last six or seven years of his career, so I mean, he should know. He's in Boston. LeBron trying to control the narrative with all this? Right now? Yeah. No. Interesting. No. no. Speaking of should I stay or should I go? And again, you know what? <laughs> there it is. And again, you know what? Absolutely, he's trying to control the narrative, Stephen A. Smith. And to be quite frank with you, Max Kellerman totally dusted you off in this segment. Why bring up the Kyrie thing? That's true. I wouldn't think about it. I would went to my. I, I, went, I went. Stop lying, Steve. You thought about it, and once again, you know a lot of the things that Max Kellerman is alluding to. You probably just don't want to bring it out in a public forum like this. I went to my information files and just, and I'm, I'm giving you the straight. But thinking about it beyond that, can't rule that out. Okay. Can't rule that out. I don't know why he would feel the need to at this point. When you say when they traded Kyrie at the beginning. Why would you say that you don't understand why LeBron James would feel the need to put out a certain narrative about the whole Kyrie Irving situation, Stephen A. Smith? You already know why. As I've been stating for a long time, he's a politician. That's what LeBron James is. That's why he's trying to dive headfirst into the political world. He's trying to dive headfirst into the political world. That's why he's attacking Michael Jordan. That's why he's trying to push and promote and act as a co-signer for people like this this politician in Texas, Beto. That's why he's doing that. He wants to become relevant in the political sphere. Beginning of the end, you're saying, look over there. Look what they did. But what about your contribution to that happening? Yeah. 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 No, I mean, yeah. Listen, I want to get into KD. But anyway, that's basically it on that. We'll see how things go in regards to the LeBron James, Kyrie Irving narrative. I have a feeling that it's not over. But once again, LeBron James is utilizing political tactics here because he is a politician. So peace.